is chasing you. That is my favorite phrase when it comes to how you should perform magic. Cause see, there's something to be said for being so smooth, so casual, and so unassuming when you perform magic, that suspicion is never even called into question. It sounds weird, but I like to model my performing style off of TV characters like Jane from The Mentalist and Neil Caffrey from White Collar. Both those are incredible shows, by the way, you gotta check them out. But both of those main characters, Jane and Neil Caffrey, are so smooth in everything that they do that suspicion is never even called into question. Now I know everyone has their own performing style, but something that bothers me that I see a lot is magicians that overprove their performance. They narrate and answer the questions the spectators might ask before they even ask them. If you don't know what overproving is, let me show you an exaggerated example really quick. Now I'm gonna show you a completely normal trick with a completely ordinary deck of playing cards. Now you might think this might be a trick deck and magicians use trick decks. That's not true, as you can tell. There are 52 playing cards and they're all different and they're all shuffled. It's a completely normal deck of cards. So you could even, you could even shuffle it and it's not ruining any stack or anything because it's just a completely normal deck. It's not a trick deck in case you were curious. So watch, let's, uh, let's take the top card, right? The eight of spades. Watch, we take this singular card, this one card, this one card, the eight of spades, and turn it over. Now we're gonna take that eight of spades and put it in the middle of the deck. Now you can tell that's actually in the middle of the deck, right? There's no sleight of hand. It is in the middle of the deck. You might think it's not middle of the deck. It's in the middle of the deck. Now watch as I cleanly with no sleight of hand, push that eight of spades into the middle. So it is completely lost. There are no breaks. Do you see any breaks? I don't see any breaks. It's completely lost. It's completely lost. Now watch, if we snap our fingers, no sleight of hand, we turn over. You see what I'm saying? It's not a good look. And while that was exaggerated, people do do that. But my main point is, if you're performing for a spectator, a true layman, you just saying this isn't a trick deck, or look, there's 52 cards, or look, there's no doubles, or look, it's only one card, or look, it's a shuffled deck, that brings into question in their mind, why would he say it in the first place? Now, I think we do this because of Instagram and YouTube. Now, obviously performing for magicians and your peers is a very healthy experience and it helps you get better. But, magicians make up 0.0000001% of the population. Laymen make up 99.9999, you get the point. So, when you tailor your performance to magicians and trying to fool them, you're definitely gonna overprove because you're trying to show them what you're not doing. But when you're performing for laymen, they don't watch magic every day. They don't critique magic. So you don't need to narrate and say things that they aren't worried about. Performing for magicians is fine. It helps you get better. But tailor your performances to that 99%, not that 1%. And like I said before, it's probably a lot less than 1% of the entire world that are magicians. See, because of social media, Instagram, YouTube, we create this personal bubble of our own interests. So if you're a magician, guess what? You follow other magicians, you interact with other magicians, and you put yourself in this bubble that isn't realistic to represent the real world. And that's perfectly fine. But what I'm saying is when you perform for regular people, they're not gonna be curious. Oh, was that a double lift? Oh, did you use a pass there? So you don't have to overprove and explain stuff to them. That's for your magician friends, not for lay people. And it will make your performances seem so much more natural, smooth, and just classy when you're just elegantly performing the trick for someone who has most likely never seen magic before. Believe it or not, most people just have not seen magic in person before. And you can treat that experience like that and give them a great impression without saying, hey look, 52 normal cards, hey look, this isn't a trick deck. You see what I'm getting at? It is a slippery slope, right? You have to narrate the trick. But just relax and answer the questions when they come, not before they come. Don't run when no one's chasing you. Now, when it comes to overproving, there's really only two reasons I could think of as to why you get in the habit of doing it. One, like I said before, you're used to proving yourself to magicians, performing for magicians, or you're just used to the magic community and learning that you have to, you know, show them that it's not that way. But the other reason I could think of is that you're afraid of hecklers, right? Now, here's the thing. Hecklers are kind of like learning how to stop, drop, and roll if you catch on fire in grade school. How many times have you caught on fire in your life? Is this on fire? Hopefully zero, and I'm gonna assume zero. I've never caught on fire, but back in elementary school, they taught you all the time. You better stop, drop, roll. 
So a heckler, let's, let's view that as catching on fire. It's awful, and you wanna know what happens when that heckler comes into play. But believe it or not, hecklers are few and far in between. Lots of you guys have asked me how to deal with hecklers, and I can get to that in another video. But true hecklers, people who are out there just to destroy you and ruin your performance, in six years of performing magic for people, I can maybe only remember two or three. Yeah, it's just stop worrying about the hecklers until they come. Then once they come, you handle it. Now I will say this quick note about hecklers. You can normally see who they're gonna be before they jump into play. It's normally a guy, not to be sexist, but it's normally a guy, and he normally has girls in the group with him who he wants to impress by showing, oh, look how intelligent I am, I can figure out the magic trick, instead of just sitting there and enjoying it. So lots of the time, I can identify a heckler before he hops in and uh, assert my dominance. Boom, just kidding, don't make your spectators ever look stupid, that's not a good look. But what I'm saying is, you can advance and counteract the heckling before it even starts. But that's a whole separate video. All I'm saying is, don't worry about hecklers when it comes to overproving. Just chill out, perform magic the way it was supposed to be by just showing it. All right, that was kind of a rant, but it's something that I've seen a lot that I want to say I'm like some authority on magic and it really bothers me. But I feel like I've done it enough where I can give some advice on how to perform. So if you like this video, <laughs> this weird rant video, and you want to see more of them, please like. If you disagree with me completely, please comment. I love to chat with you. I love chatting with all of you. And if you're new here, please subscribe. We will see you in the next video on Thursday, a brand new episode of Rise Again, and on Saturday, the Rise Up podcast. All right, guys. Peace.